All right, all right, all right. What's happening? What's happening? We just started this live right now. Ah, there we go. All right. Looky look. How's it going, my man? Uh, it looks like Annette is there too. How's everybody doing? Uh, Christian, what's happening, my man? What's happening? I'm just walking from uh, picking up this book from a mate. Now we're yeah, just going to see how it all goes. How's everybody doing? Steven Seaton, I see you tuning in, my man. How's it going? Scotty, Scotty Woodrow. What's happening, boss? Uh, yeah, who else is there? James Brown. How's everybody doing? Good stuff. Good on you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, obviously, it's the Lunch and Learn. Sorry, I'm a little bit late. I'm just coming in from uh, visiting a mate that was giving me these books here. So, it works out perfectly. Guys, today we're actually talking about how you can stay connected in this virtual world that we're living in. I see Anthony's just tuning in. Thank you so much, my man. All right. So, uh, tell me something. Where is everybody tuning in from? Steven, I know you're tuning in from New Zealand. Anthony, could you type in where you're tuning in from? And um, everybody else, just let us know where you are connecting this live feed from, okay? Today, we're talking about something that a lot of people take for granted, um, but don't quite realize that it's actually essential for their success in business. How it is actually a human need for people to stay connected. I see Derek Hall has just tuned in. Iva Lee, thank you so much for tuning in again. Robert, thank you so much. Yes, you're tuning in from Toronto. Please type in where you're connecting us from so that we know, you know, how big the scope of our message is actually going. Bahiri, thank you so much for tuning in. All right. So we might be all connected. We might all have smartphones. We might all have the internet. We might all have uh, email. We might all have automation. But I want to tell you something. Your customers crave human connection. All right. That's one thing that you should never, ever forget. Your customers crave your connection. They crave human connection. They also crave connecting with their loved ones. And so do you at a human level. All right. So at the end of the day, have you ever noticed that kids that grow up in a, a dysfunctional home, they never amount to a whole lot in society? Have you ever noticed that, um, you know, animals that are separated from their mothers or their other um, animals at birth, um, you know, they, they never function normally? Yeah. Or people or kids or things like that. All right. So we constantly need to be connected to people. We constantly need to connect on a human level to other human beings. No matter how technologically advanced we might think we are, no matter how, um, you know, um, automated we might think our businesses are, working in a digital world can be very lonely. And that's one thing that is the detriment to a lot of businesses. Because you're lonely, you don't have anyone to bounce off ideas off of, you don't have anyone to, um, you know, motivate you, you don't have anyone to, um, you know, keep you on top of your game. Alright? So much of our work has become virtual, do you know what I mean? And it's easy to miss out when the connection is actually needed and how a face-to-face -face con collaboration with somebody can actually make your job look better than it is right now or your business grow. All right. I, I just went out. Um, I don't know if you saw the start of this video and I went and I connected um, with an old friend just so that I have some sort of human connection. That's not my family. That's not my daughter. I think as, as entrepreneurs, I think we really, really need that. And in as much as we might think that working from a home office or working in a virtual environment, like, first of all, I've, I've had my business for the past, say, five years or so. You know what I mean? And I have to say, I have to really say, you know, there's some kind of isolation that you start feeling as a business person. I see Vans Banda has just tuned in. Thank you so much for tuning in, buddy. All right. 
There's some sort of isolation that you start feeling because at the core of us as human beings, we are brought up as societal beings. We, in, in as much as we want to think we are civilized, we have wanted to separate ourselves from each other. And the more we want to separate ourselves from each other, the more disaster happens. That's the reason why people go on, on a rampage and start hurting other people. You know why? Because they are seeking attention from other human beings. Now, can you imagine what it would do um, to you if you are actually connected to people that are on their way, people that are actually doing stuff or doing the things that you want to be doing in your business or have the results that you crave for? Tom Boyd, thank you so much for tuning in, my man. Thank you so much. And Tom Kuzma, thank you so much for tuning in as well. All right. You know, I, 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 I went on to, um, yes, Montree, thank you so much for tuning in as well from New Zealand. You know, most of the time, most of my clients, I don't even get to meet them. Most of my clients, I don't even know what their voices sound like because we just communicate over email. But can you imagine how many things can be, um, how many things can be uh, misheard or, or misconstrued in, 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 in communication just because it's over text? How many relationships have broken down, you know, between men and women just because some text was taken out of, uh, some text was taken out of proportion? Can you imagine how many people are failing to conduct business with you just because of a typo on your website? Things like that may be happening. How many times do you see somebody typing a statement and it's grammatically wrong and then you automatically don't even want to have a bar of them or even hear about them? So we really have to rely on our human skill of connecting with other individuals. And those people that are smarter than me have even mentioned that, um, you know, you are an average of the five people that you hang around with. Sometimes those five people, Sometimes it's not just five virtual people. It really has to be five people that you talk to, five people that you communicate with on a, on a consistent basis. How many people can you actually count on right now if anything goes wrong with your business that you can pick up the phone and you can call and say, hey, Jimmy, hey, Sally, hey, Joanne, hey, Tom, hey, Lucy, hey, Robert, can you help me with some advice? I don't think a lot of us have that. And that's the reason why our businesses sometimes fail because we don't have, like what Scott says, an inner circle. Humans, no matter how advanced or no matter how technologically advanced we think we are, the only difference between you and a caveman is the car that you drive. Do you know what I mean? So on most days, you know, it might be fine to go at it alone, but, and, and obviously working from home is, you know, it has its perks, but the longer you work like this, the longer you start realizing that sometimes having a few people around you, it's, it's kind of nice. Yeah. Like what Robert does, he conducts his uh, meetings with people, um, you know, every single day with uh, not every second day or so with people like Tom. Uh, Tom Boyd, and then they just connect like that. That's the reason why we are on social media, to connect with other human beings. But we're not utilizing the actual use of social media. We just think other people out there are just a hashtag. Connect with other human beings if you want anything out of um, you know your social media efforts. It's nice to have a chat once in a while and bounce off ideas and, you know, to just vent off about bad days or to actually celebrate the good days. How are you going to know if things are working or not working and, and how are you going to know that you're actually on the right track if you don't have people that are holding you accountable? You, you know what I mean? Yes, we might be connected on, on social like this. We might be virtually connected. That's the reason why I come out here every single day so that I speak to a, a certain group of people so that at least there I can create conversations. Robert says there's a meeting ongoing right now, which I ducked out to get on there. Robert, I like your tenacity in this, man. It's fantastic. At the end of the day, the more social we get, 
the most social skills you actually start having. Do you know people can actually not do a deal with you just because of your handshake? Have you ever known or have you ever heard of people not doing a deal because of the way you speak or the way you, you, you say your words? P personal and social skills are truly a skill. You got to keep practicing them. You won't get them just sitting um, you know, on your computer or sitting on your phone. You've got to keep practicing social skills. Do you know what I mean? Yes, and Stephen says, good man, prosper. <laughs> Thank you so much. And if what doesn't get practiced gets, gets rusty. I know for sure a lot of business deals, maybe a few couple of thousand dollar deals are done online. But when people really want to make real money, it's always offline. Yeah? When people want to make real transactions, it's phone calls, it's always offline. You actually have to talk to a human. It's not machine operated for transactions above $5,000. Unless you just want to play small, then that's fine. But if you really want to go into the real money, you've got to start practicing your social skills. You know what I mean? And you have to experience real human interactions on a regular basis and so that you, you don't lose touch of, of how to actually speak human and be human. Yeah? The more you don't speak to people, um, you know, or in person or you just use your phone as a means of communication, the harder it, it becomes to make small talk. And it, it starts creating awkward, you know, conversations. Trust me, I've been there. So you want to make sure that, you know, for every eight days that you are not seeking out to speak to other human beings, make the ninth one or the tenth one at least a social day that you either even go to church or go to some sort of gathering where you meet other people. First of all, you overcome loneliness. Because once you're lonely, you start thinking bad thoughts. And bad thoughts or, or a, a, a bad workshop up there is never creative. Yeah, There's a lot of isolation that accompanies owning an online business. And it's, it, it's inevitable because you've got to focus on your work. But it doesn't mean that you don't have to also connect with other people. Even if you live in a rural area and all you have is like maybe an internet um, connection while working online, I've also really have managed to keep in touch with certain people just, you know what, so that I keep my human skills intact. Otherwise, I could only speak woman or three-year-old. And this is what we have around us. And none of those, I'm not saying the people that you live around are not going to help you, but... They're not going to, you know, help you take deals across the line. So this is what you can do in, in the process of you actually connecting with people that you want to get money off of in the future. Treat social media as if it's like your, is your office cooler. Those of you that have worked in corporate, you know that after every 20, 30 minutes, people will take a long walk to the water cooler to get some water to drink. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what I do myself, um, you know, because because I'm always working with client work and stuff like that. I use what is called the Pomodoro, um, you know, sequence or Pomodoro uh, uh, technique where I, you know, you know, I, I, I divide my day into 30 minute intervals and then 25 minutes is true dedicated work. And then I give myself five minutes as a reward, which is why this which is how I then go on um, on social media. All right. So you don't have to be constantly on social media or whatever it is. Just five, six minutes a day when you're actually connecting with the people, not just liking or commenting or just being mesmerized about other people's work. And Stephen says, you've got to practice the spin on people outside your customers, too. Exactly. You have to constantly be talking to people because money is actually derived from other human beings.
Not from the systems, not from Facebook, not from, you know, whatever tricks or, or methods you think it's coming from. Money doesn't come online. Money comes from other humans that are on the other side of the screen. So if you cannot speak to those other humans, how do you expect them to then pay you? All right. For me, social media is usually like my, my, my office water cooler. Right? It's easier than, you know, it's easier than ever to, to stay connected with a network of people from different places of the world during the day, you know, even if I'm working from home. All right. I use Facebook a lot. So some people might use Instagram or Twitter, whichever way it is. You know, I work, like I said, in, you know, with the Pomodoro, you know, technique. So it's in short spurts of 20 to 30 minutes. And during my breaks, I just pop over to, to Facebook and I share what I'm working on and I chat with other people, find out what they're doing, etc., etc. So if Facebook is not your thing, you know, you could do something similar with another platform like LinkedIn or Twitter or something like that, or even a forum or a message board. You just gotta, you know, consistently be updated with what other humans are actually doing. And it might sound like it's an oxymoron, but you actually really need it so that you're not lonely and you're creative. But I'm not saying you should sit there and just consume other people's content. So it does take an intelligent person to actually understand what I'm trying to say today. All right. Steven says they want instant response nowadays. Days of emails. Uh, it's like slow mail. Yeah, definitely, man. So no matter where you choose to chat, whether it's email or whether it's on Facebook, etc., etc., the secret is to make sure it's it's a very useful and tactical way to spend your time. You actually have to participate in the conversations. All right. So many people have you know accounts in different platforms. So many people have accounts on Facebook, etc., etc., but they just lurk in the shadows and they rarely even chime in. That's not the effective use I'm talking about of your time. That's not the way I'm talking about. And Robert says, I would wither and die without the internet. <laughs> yeah, you know, those people that are not contributing in conversations, they sometimes, you know, just overthink the commenting and then they end up just consuming a lot of content and never add to the conversation. All right. So don't be a lurker, participate, connect with people. You know you want to talk to people, you know you want to be there. Be open to sharing what's happening with you, what's actually working. Because in my experience, it's pretty simple to actually get clients when they know you've got value to offer than when you've got none to offer. You know? And that's a new way to make friends. That's that's how I have gotten to have a lot of you guys in my friends list because you know what? I reached out and we communicated. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, people need to get an inside look of what it is you're working on every single day. Give them that opportunity using your social media. One other thing that I also do these days is having what I call virtual coffee dates. You know, when I actually meet people in person, not just an, their avatar or the representative they want me to see on their Facebook. I actually have a coffee date with them on Zoom. Yeah. Those are my favorite way of actually staying connected with people without even leaving the office. You know, I schedule maybe a, a 30 to 45 Zoom chat with people just to get to know them better. No one is selling anything there, but just getting to know people. Because you know what? People buy from those that they know, like, and trust. All right? So if you regularly interact with people like that and people that you've probably met online, you get to know them. They get to know you too. You know? And there's, there's usually no real agenda with calls like this, my virtual coffee dates. And if you want to get on a virtual coffee date with me, just type in the word coffee. I'll send you a link so that we can actually have a virtual coffee date and just talk about life and what's happening in yours, etc., etc. You know, it's just literally meeting somebody in a cafeteria, but in the comfort of my own home. So we just talk about what's working right now, what they're doing, what sucks. 
and many other you know specific questions anybody might have for each other what actually do you do etc etc without trying to sell anyone anything do you know what? I actually find that it works half the time. I've made so many other deals after that. You know why? Because people just really need to connect with other human beings. You have no idea. Yeah? And sometimes, you know, you could just now make them a regular check-in. Some people might be going through a lot and they can't even tell the people around them. So if you can be the person that they can, you know, trust with whatever is happening, be that person. Because normally I try and deliberate and schedule these, these calls maybe one to three or four a month. Do you know what I mean? And, and if I don't, I usually fill out that time with some sort of activity where I'm interviewing other people for the online prosperity show. You really got to continuously connect with people. How are people going to know what you do if you're not reaching out? Hmm? Yes, how are people going to trust you? How are people going to actually know what it is that you do? Because your website, nobody goes there anymore. Trust me, unless you're paying thousands and thousands of money to Google and to, for people to go to your website, nobody cares these days unless you show them that you actually care about them too. So if you're ever going to do a, you know, a virtual coffee date, you know, just think of things in mind, prepare for the first call, um, one thing that you've got to do is just become a very good listener because people like being heard. And if you can be a sounding board for other people, you will also find out what actually is their problem and see if any of your solutions can help them. And be also open to sharing. Do you know what I mean? So on that coffee day, just make sure you've got like maybe a couple of questions prepared so there's not that awkward, you know, lag in the conversation. You know, and obviously just make sure you've got a pen and paper ready just to jot down what is their biggest problem and figure out if you cannot create something to help other people. Because if somebody has a problem, that means two or three or four other people in the market have the same problem too. Yeah. And, but just remember these virtual calls, um, you know, coffee dates, they, they're not a sales opportunity. Don't be always having the scarcity mindset of thinking that every person that agrees to meet with you wants to go, um, I mean, wants to buy your stuff. All right. So you want to just make sure that, you know, don't go in thinking that you're going to find a new referral from them or you're going to find or you're going to put out a sales pitch. People like buying stuff, but they don't like being sold to. So the point of this is to actually just connect with like minded people. And sometimes we just have a lot of people that are lurking as our friends. How are you going to know if this person really needs to be in your friend list or not? Or how are you going to know if this person actually, um, you know, has value to offer? These days, it's not about numbers. It's not about, you know, vanity that, oh, I have 3,000 friends or whatever it is. 3,000 friends of which you can't even call any one of them. Then what good are they? Start creating ways and start trying to meet with all these people to just find out, do they actually have the value that they perpetrate, that they have, or what can you collaborate and create together? Anything else that comes as a result of these chats is an extra perk. Do you know what I mean? These days, you got to be making sure you're creating a whole lot, you know, and giving, giving a lot of value. Even if you're not being paid for it, it will come, you know, somehow. And Janice, thank you so much for tuning in. And Nicole, thank you so much for tuning in. One other way of, um, you know, creating this, um, you know, connecting with other people is to host your own meetups. I don't know if you know that website, meetup.com uh, or something like that. Create your own meetups and or start your own groups on, 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 on Facebook. You know, because without that, without you connecting with other people, how are you going to reach out to, a, you know, an extended audience? We are human. We are wired to be social. The more we try and fight that, that's why depression comes in. That's why people, um, you know, you know, just start suffering from illnesses they don't comprehend. You know why? You need to laugh. You need, you need to exercise certain muscles in your body that can only happen when you connect with other human beings. 
All right? So, you know, the more you are happy, the more your clients are going to see that you are a person that they can deal with. And that would help your online presence. You know why? Once you've already met with somebody else, they already see you in a different light. Right now, we are just hoarding friends from anywhere. Anyone can be your friend these days, but are they of value? Do you really want them in your, in your newsfeed? We are unfollowing people. Why do we continuously just becoming friends with people we're not even connecting with? And a lot of the times, the people we are trying to connect with are usually our customers or people that can, can be our partners in, in, in business. Why not actually make an effort, create a virtual coffee date with them and actually meet them in person so that you can make, um, you know, you, you, you can actually, you know, do something together with them. There's a lot of people that are in my newsfeed that have a lot of value that I haven't even tapped into, but I'm sitting here by myself being all depressed. Why would I be doing that when there's a lot of people to connect with? So maybe the problem is you. Maybe you don't have value to offer. Maybe that's why you're not connecting with people. You're just amassing the people so that you can spice up your you know, your, your ego, um, or whatever it is, but you have no value to offer. Just let people go. Don't hold people hostage. If you cannot connect with them. All right. So at the end of the day, it's one of those things that if you are going to be moving forward in your business, I want to tell you one thing, a lot of business transactions actually happen offline than they do online. Unless you're playing a small game where your prices are maybe $2 and below, then maybe you need to price out your socials. But if you're really, 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 um, if you're really, really wanting to make real money and um, make a real big difference, human connection is where it's at. Yeah. And Scott says you are like five of your friends, which is absolutely true. You know, you want to continue, um, you know, maintaining a few high quality friendships and then you, there's no reason for you to be turning into a hermit and, you know, you start resenting your internet based business because you are not physically connecting to the people that you think you're going to be taking money off of. Just go ahead and give it a try. All those people that are in your newsfeed, some of them you don't even care about. So why bother? Why are you holding them hostage? Connect with them, find out what value they have, send a couple of people, five people, a message every single day just to find out what it is they do and why you should stay connected. You will notice that sometimes some people have so much value, have the missing part that you're looking for in your business for you to get to the next level. But maybe you don't have value to offer. Maybe that's what the problem is. All right. I've, I've give, given you an opportunity. Type in the word coffee so that we can have a virtual coffee date. I'm not selling you anything. I'm not going to talk to you about nothing. I just want to know how you live. Unless you don't have value to offer, then that's fine. You might as well unfriend me. All right. We really need to start connecting with the people that we're going to be, um, you know, relating to and the people that we're going to be serving. Unless you don't have value. Yeah. So you should actually stay connected in real life, even though you're working URL. All right. In the meantime, I hope you're going to have a fantastic day. And, and yeah, let's stay connected. Type in the word coffee. I'll send you a link so that we can have a, a virtual coffee date. All right. Get a meeting. Find out what you're doing. You can also find out what I'm doing. If you don't have value, please unfriend me right this second. Because I'm gonna, I'm coming after you. All right. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.